So yeah, today in this pre I'm gonna give you a heads up of some R&D work that we at NVIDIA have been doing with the folks at Epic and also with the folks at Megapixel VR who make uh, LED wall controllers that drive this, uh, volume, volumes like this. Oh, going well, the wrong way. Yeah, so before I jump in, since this is, this is SIGGRAPH, just an overview, like SIMTI 2110, what's that? So SIMTI, the Society of Motion Picture of Television Engineers, they make standards for the broadcast and media and entertainment industry. So SIMTI 2110 is a, a family of standards for the transmission of media essence streams over, over internet protocol video based on UDP and the real-time protocol RTP. And it's a family of standards, like it said. So there's a, it defines the timing, and then different uh, protocols for video, audio, and ancillary data, and things like that. The data, can, the video can be uncompressed or it can be compressed, and and it, like I said, it's audio, it's metadata. Within SIMTI, these are the standards, and there's currently a, a Rapid Industry Solutions group that's looking at the, the transfer of metadata in virtual production, and one of the standards they're considering to use is, is the 2110-41 and dash 40, which is the ancillary data. Oh, got to get. And then P2P. So P2P is the precision time protocol. It's based on IEEE 1588, and it's based on the satellite time. So you take the satellite time, and then you have a, it talks to a grandmaster. You have a grandmaster in your facility that manages the time from the satellite, and then you have one or more switches in between your grandmaster and all the systems in your, in your facility. And then it's passing PTP messages, which are messaging the time, and ultimately within your systems in your, that are running your virtual production facility, each system has a P2P hardware clock inside of it that's keeping the time from, from the satellite local. And if it's always updating from the different, like if you have a switch in between your grandmaster and your, your system, then that's like a boundary clock. So it's getting the time updates from that. So you have, what you have with P2P is you have the same time on all your systems throughout your facility. So yeah, so let's move. How does this apply to in-camera virtual effects or ICB effects? So that's kind of, we'll take 702110 and PTP and we'll apply them there. And Stephen Miller, who spoke just before me, did a good introduction and overview of in-camera virtual effects and virtual production in general. So I'll just mention just a couple terms that are important as my, I do my talk here. One is you have the, the inner thrust room, which is what the camera sees, and it's rendered at a high resolution, while the outer thrust room is the, the rest of the wall that provides lighting into the scene, but it's typically rendered at a low resolution because you don't need to render it at high resolution. And then you take the inner thrust room, the outer thrust room, and the lighting, and you composite it within the camera, and that's your in-camera virtual effects. So in a traditional stage, you have a collection of technologies, and it's a mix. You have cameras that are typically connected with SDI into CCUs or camera control units that are typically black boxes from a vendor that have their, their software on them. And then those uh, CCUs transfer the, the camera view frustrum of, that they see to the render nodes. And the render nodes have two, two GPUs because you need a GPU to render the inner frustrum and then the second GPU then renders the outer frustrum. And then the, the render nodes are connected with like end display in the case of Unreal Engine. These drive the LED wall typically through display port or HDMI through a LED wall controller. So what's, and then to maintain all the timing throughout the system, you have a typical signal generator that's giving you a house sync signal as has been done in broadcast for, for years and years. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem here is that this doesn't scale. It works okay with one camera, 
and maybe with two cameras, but because you have a separate GPU here that's, that's rendering the camera, the inner view frustum at a high resolution before the composite, that GPU can only render so many camera views before you just, you have to reduce the resolution basically of the camera views in order to keep it real time. So that's one of the problems we want to solve here. So then we moved and we, we used SMPTE 2110 video over IP. So what does that do for us? Basically it removes all the SDI, all the NDI, all the, the net, everything's in, it's a network device now. It all runs through your, your network switch and it's all SMPTE 2110. So now your cameras, they speak SMPTE 2110. They go into a CCU, but the CCU is not anything special anymore. It's, it's simply another server that's just like your render node servers, except it's rendering the inner camera view versus rendering the wall. So now you can have a CCU per camera, so you can have basically an unlimited number of cameras. And like I said, it's a COT server, nothing special. And then you have your render nodes that are taking, what the CCU do, do is they render the, the interview frustums, and then with SMPTE 2110, you have the idea, the concept of unicast and multicast. Unicast in networking is one-to-one, -one, sending your packets from one, the sink source to the sink. Well, with SMPTE 110, you have multicast. So what happens with the CCU now is they, they multicast the interview frustums to all the render nodes at 2x real time. So all the render nodes can ha have the intercam frustum view and the outer frustum view, and they do the compositing in real time, and this is how, how it scales because you have one CCU per camera. And then the render nodes set up with N-Display run the LED wall through new LED wall controllers, like from Megapixel VR, that now support SMPTE 2110. So you get rid of all the display port, all the HDMI, all the optical cable extenders that you need if your wall is a long way from your server farm, etc. So that's the beauty of 2110. And then the timing, instead of doing analog or composite uh, genlock timing, it's all based on precision time protocol now. So it's all network based. So now you have your PTP Grandmaster that plugs into your switch, just like all the other devices. And then this, this allows you to scale. So yeah, so I mostly said all this already. But yeah, everything, is, we, we throw out all the legacy connectivity and it's all one standard SMPTE 2110 video over IP. But as you can imagine, timing is important because the, the, the camera needs to be synced to the, 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 the frame rate of the camera and the lens of the camera and the shutter of the camera needs to be sync to the, the wall and the timing of the wall. And this can be difficult, especially in a Windows environment where you can have, first of all, when the Windows operating system doesn't have a native uh, PTP stack. And then there can be differences in, in the hardware and software configuration that really can impact the real-time operation of the PTP protocol. So how do we solve that? Well, what we do is reintroduce what we call a DPU, which is basically a network interface card. It's the same network interface card that's doing your SMPTE 2110, but it also has an ar eight ARM cores on it where we can run a Docker container that's running PTP4L, which is your PTP uh, for Linux uh, up process that's actually getting the PTP messages off the wire and updating the PTP hardware clock in each, in each node. And then when when your application for virtual production, like Unreal Engine, for example, wants to get the current PTP time, it queries the PTP hardware clock on the DPU and it has the time, the accurate time. And with this DPU, like I said, it works on Windows, it works on Linux, it works virtualized, always, it, it, it always gives the right PTP time because it's, it's independent of the, the operating system and other things running on the system. So yeah, so I, I basically just talked about this. So you have your, your Windows application, or it can be in a VM or, or bare metal. It, you have your network, it's updating the PTP hardware clock. 
and then the application calls in and gets the time this way by reading the PDB hardware clock. So yeah, so let's put all the pieces together here. So here's how it fits. We have our L from top to bottom, we have our, our LED wall, we have our LED wall controllers that now support SMPTE 2110, like the, the Helios controllers from Megapixel VR. We have our network switch from NVIDIA or Cisco or any, any vendor like that. And then we have our render nodes down here. The render nodes consist of a GPU, of course, because they're rendering the, the wall. And then we have the, the NIC or the DPU that's doing the network and the PDP. And then what's this third thing? Well, this third thing is what we call a, a, syn a GPU synchronization card, or we call it Quadro Sync. And this, this Quadro Sync lets us lock the frame rate and the vertical retrace of the GPUs to the frame boundaries that, if you know PDP, PDP is giving you the accurate time since what we call the epic, which is January 1st, 1970. So if you get the PDP time in nanoseconds and you do the math, you can tell exactly where you are in a frame since 1970. So that's how we know exactly where we are in the frame and we can time this, the GPU to that. So on the hardware side, the goal is to, to lock the, the rendering or the raster lock of the GPU to the PDP and the frame boundary provided by PDP. So on the left, you see what happens when we don't have, have raster lock, right? So you have three GPUs and they're all rendering it at different times, this vertical line. And, and if they're not locked to the raster lock, then you get tearing like this and timing artifacts. Whereas if they are locked, you get the, your nice vertical line that you would expect with, and you can have a delta of up to five to 10 nanoseconds here and to naked eye it'll still look, look, look clean. And that's the, that's the granularity, five to 10 nanoseconds that we can lock the GPU to with uh, PTP timing. So then on the software side, so like in Unreal Engine or a different, another a virtual production software, we have the GPU now locked to the, to, the, to the frame boundaries, but we also need to, to make sure that each render node is rendering the same frame, right? Otherwise you have different LED panels on different frames. So we do that with what we call uh, present barriers and swap barriers. So, so here we have four GPUs that are drawing frames and everything's good for frame one but then you see in frame two that GPU three is gonna take a lot more longer than the other GPUs. So we set up a present barrier, which makes all the other GPUs wait until GPU three is done. Otherwise on your wall, you'll have, if, if you have four GPUs here, these two GPUs will be on one frame and this, these two GPUs are on the, the frame before because, oh, they missed the frame time of 16 milliseconds, right? So by putting in a present boundary, in our, in our software, we lock them all, and okay, we drop the frame, but at least they're, they're all on the same frame on your wall. So this is the software side of, of synchronization. Again, all tied with PTP because we, we take our PTP time, we, we lock it through the GPU sync board, and we're locking the GPU. So how does this happen? Well, we take our our grandmaster at the top of the picture here, we loop out. It's, it's taking your PTP time from your, from your satellite. It's feeding it onto the network and it goes into the DPU that's here. The DPU has a BNC connector out of it that gives us a pulse that we then can feed into this BNC connector on our sync board that previously was used with like an analog sync generator in, in broadcast and production for many years. Now we can generate this signal from the DPU so we can now drive the GPU with PDP. So that was kind of my talk about something we've been working on with both the guys at Epic and the guys at Megapixel VR. If, if you, it's, it's, some of it's available today. If you download load Epic 5.2 from the GitHub repo, you can find the RiverMax plugin and the RiverMax plugin in 5.2 supports the camera side of it. 
running the interview frustrum in SIPT 2110 at 2x the frame rate into the render nodes. And right now we're working on 5.3. We're adding the, the LED wall controller stuff and we're, we're working on it every day to, 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 right now we're working really closely to sync all the render nodes to PDP and get it all working up on the, on the wall. And when 5.3 comes out in the next few weeks, it'll all be there. Thanks for listening today. All right, hey, thanks, bud. Uh, we have some questions real quick. Yeah, yeah, can you? All right, what do we got here, Michael? So I've got a kind of a strange question. I bought the wrong DPU that doesn't have the PPS out on it. Am I able to generate that PPS out signal from my GM clock and feed it into the sync board that way for like testing? Not really, because yeah, you might be able to work, but you have to do all as long the as it's in the same phase. Yeah, yeah, it have to be in the same phase. And, and my other question with the whole architecture of that. Uh, stack, do I need to put the sync card and PTP card in each machine? Yeah. Or can I have it in one machine and use the regular Ethernet, Ethernet swap sync between them? Now, each of the render nodes would need to have one to sync the, and then you daisy chain them together. Is, is there a world where it'll be able to be less cards in my machine? I think so. I think we'll get there. But at the moment, yeah, you would need one per render node. Copy that. I mean, we're t honestly, we're trying to make it work with Epic without the Quadro Sync card, but we're not quite there yet. All right. Because they do all that sync internally. And it may be good enough for you, but there are cases where have doing it in hardware is much more precise. Hey, um, I'm not uh, familiar with uh, PTP. Um, are, are you, in essence, time stamping every frame? I mean, wh what's going on in there? Yeah, so... So yeah, so the, the PDP is in nanoseconds, and then part of the SIMT 2110 standard is that every frame has an RTP header, which has a frame timestamp in it, and that frame timestamp is generated from PDP. And that's what we're using within Unreal to make sure at the moment that when we, all the render nodes are rendering the same frame. Cool. But yeah, you can get the, it's all in the essence stream. All right, do we have any other questions? One more, Jared? The GPU that came out today without the heads, will that work in this workflow? The, the, the GPU, the, a, the ADA GPU that has no display ports, will that work in this workflow eventually? Is that the intention in the long term? Yeah, the, the, the it should. Uh, but th those new GPUs are designed for like virtual machines, yeah. but I don't know how Unreal works in virtual machine. We've been doing it all in bare metal. Yeah, okay. But in theory, yes. All right. Thank you so much, Thomas. Appreciate everything. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.